Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Monday, October 14th, 2019. Got a free pick coming up in Monday Night Football in just a moment. First quick note, if you've yet to take advantage of the discounted offer for the rest of the football season, it still stands. Go over to DocSports.com, get 33% off the rest of the football season. That includes college football and the NFL. You don't have to purchase separately. They're all together. College football, NFL, 33% off the rest of the season. When you jump on my handicappers homepage at DocSports.com. When you click on that uh, the uh, package, it'll ask you for a code word. That code word is FB Season 33. FB Season 33. All one word. Don't miss out. All right, listen. Uh, after a winning day Saturday with units, picking up a few units and cashing the big play on Saturday, I did not have a good Sunday. I went one and three with my premium picks over at DocSports.com, and our six star plays, which had been six and zero, oh, uh, finally lost one. And uh, so anyway, we've got to regroup, get it back together. We had won four out of five uh, Sundays as far as units profited, four out of five Sundays in the NFL. And then yesterday going just one and three, disappointing day, obviously. But uh, we'll jump right back into it. I'm going to have a free pick for Monday Night Football on this report. And of course, next Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, I have both college football and the NFL. We may have an eight-star play in college football coming up this week, first one of the season. Look through the lines, did my initial handicapping on Sunday afternoon and there's two games that could actually fit eight star status we'll see how the lines uh, how the lines move uh, between now and Thursday at release time at DocSports.com but a potential for a big eight star weekend next week college football we'll let you know more as we get closer uh, to our release day which is Thursday each and every week in college and NFL as far as NFL's run, it's still uh, pretty decent. 69 and 47, with a couple of pushes with about our last 120 something uh, plays in the NFL going back a few seasons now. 69 and 47, we'll take that. And uh, But again, we got to bounce back next week after going 1 and 3 on Sunday in the NFL. NASCAR, we had a 7 unit play, but NASCAR got suspended at Talladega, and we were out in front with our matchup. They'll make it up on Monday. Checked with a couple of books who say still in action. Just wanted to make sure to let you know if you jumped in on our NASCAR play on Sunday. They'll make it up on Monday at Talladega, uh, and uh, they had about 60 laps, maybe a little bit short of that, into the race when the race was suspended. So that ticket is still good uh, as we look ahead to the makeup on Monday. As far as everything else, uh, baseball action, we are doing this video early on Sunday, so the game is just getting underway as I cut this video between uh, the Yankees and the Astros. Here's what's going on for Monday. Seven-unit play in the NHL. First one of the season. It goes on Monday. It'll be available Monday morning over at DocSports.com. That will be the lead play for me. You know how well we've done in the NHL. I've talked about loving early season hockey October, November last year, and this year so far we are 28 and 14 uh, in the NHL October, November run. So don't miss out on Monday's play. Again, first seven unit play of the NHL season. All right, let's do what we do before we get to the free pick and what we do on Mondays is talk a little bit about the college football uh, line moves. Uh, really wanted to quickly mention, though, before we talk about the college football openers for the upcoming week. And yeah, of course, on Tuesday morning, I'll have my NFL recap for this past week of NFL action. I don't know about you guys, but man, was it a messy week by quarterbacks in the NFL? I mean, Jared Goff, he looks like it's about time to stick a fork in him. I mean, he goes 13 for 24. Another bad day through for about 70 yards. That was it. I don't care if you don't have Gurley or not. You got to come out with a better uh, game plan than that on offense. And he has really not had a real good performance now uh, since before the Super Bowl of last year when New England beat them 13 to 3. It's been kind of ugly on that Rams offense. But look around the league and you just see Jameis Winston, five interceptions. Uh, Minshew had a bad day. Just right down the line, horrible days by quarterbacks. The best day for quarterbacks, I think, was the two quarterbacks in the game played in Arizona, Kyler Murray and, of course, Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons combined for a huge day. They went something like 57 for 73, seven touchdown passes between the two of them, no interceptions, but right down the line over the rest of the league, Baker Mayfield, three more picks from him. Just a bad day for quarterbacks. We'll talk more about that on the NFL recap on Tuesday's video, which we should have done no later than 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday morning. 
Let's jump into uh, some college football openers. Quick thoughts on some of these games. Thursday night, UCLA is at Stanford. Circa open Stanford, 7.5. They're up to 10. Both teams with quarterback issues. UCLA's quarterback is listed as questionable, as is Stanford's quarterback, Costello, also questionable. Uh, Friday night football, UNLV at Fresno. Fresno open 16.5. It's down to 14.5. Tony Sanchez trying to save his job in Las Vegas, and they thumped. Vanderbilt on the road 34 to 10 nice feather in the cap win for UNLV but here's what happened Sanchez finally removed Armani Rogers from the quarterback spot he's not a quarterback he can't pass he's terrible as far as his accuracy so he gives the start to Kenyon Oblad and the kid leads him to a win they had Chad Magyar who ran well they had Charles Williams who ran well those two players combined 46 carries for a buck 85 but that line coming down now Fresno 16 and a half down to 14 and a half and you know what happens when you expect UNLV to to finally get things on track. It hasn't gone well for about 20 years. Uh, Saturday's action, Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is now a six-point favorite. They opened two and, a, two and a half at the Circa, up to six, as I mentioned. Here's an interesting game in the Big Ten, Purdue at Iowa. We saw the Boilermakers finally get back on track. They thumped Maryland. Jack Plummer had a huge game, 33 for 41, 420 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Purdue piled up almost 550 yards on the Terps after struggling for a few weeks. Meanwhile, Iowa how about 71 yards last two games rushing the football. Uh, atrocious on offense right now. Stanley, one touchdown, four picks in his last two games, including the 17-12 loss to Penn State. However, Iowa went from a 15-point favorite to a 17-point favorite. We'll see how this team reacts off of back-to-back -back losses, especially with Purdue finally putting one together last week. Uh, the only real threat to Ohio State, it seems like, in the Big Ten is Wisconsin, and they've gone from a 25 and a half point road favorite at Illinois to 29 and a half. Uh, the quarterback for Illinois, Peters, is listed as questionable. Wisconsin has Ohio State next up. We'll see if that affects them at all in this game in Champaign. As far as the betters are concerned, uh, they're not worried about that look ahead potential uh, to Ohio State. Wisconsin up to 29 and a half. Nevada at Utah State. Utah State opened 19. They are up to 22. A little bit of a revenge spot here for Utah State. They opened, as I said, three points lower than where they stand right now. They had last week off to take an extra week to heal up and prepare for Nevada. Meanwhile, Reno almost gave one away at home to San Jose State. They gained 540 plus yards. And uh, the problem was is they turned the ball over, uh, I think it was four or five times in the game. Just a ridiculous number of turnovers from the Nevada Wolfpack. Malik Henry in his uh, first real start uh, the transfer from Florida State had some good spots, had some bad spots, but right now Utah State a 22-point favorite. Boise State at BYU. BYU goes down and blows it against South Florida. You got to beat South Florida. They could not do it. Boise goes from a one and a half point favorite to a five and a half point road favorite on Sunday at Circa. Uh, Backheimer is listed as questionable for Boise. He suffered a hip injury. BYU's quarterback situation is a mess. Seems like anybody with QB next to his name is banged up right now for the BYU Cougars, and so far the betters have jumped on Boise State. Kentucky is at Georgia. I wanted to bring this up. A little bit of a move. Georgia goes from 27 down to 25. Jake Fromm had the bad game. One touchdown, three picks in the loss to South Carolina. Minus four turnover ratio against the Gamecocks is how you outgain a team by almost 200 yards and find a way to lose. That's what happened to Georgia. Will they be able to get it back together uh, between the years and cover a point spread of 25 points? It'll be interesting because their national title hopes or at least a chance to play in the playoffs took a significant hit against South Carolina between the hedges even on Saturday all those turnovers didn't expect Jake Fromm to have that kind of game against South Carolina I didn't play either side but again Georgia 20 and a half point favorite gets beat outright all right, uh, again, before I get to the Monday Night Football game, we do have our first seven-unit play going in the NHL on the season. It goes on Monday. It'll be available Monday morning over at DocSports.com. NHL will, excuse me, NASCAR will continue on Monday. And uh, always be sure to check back for our next baseball action. We're going to have our Monday Night Football pick right here, an opinion in the battle between the Lions and the Packers. And listen, I know the Packers, you can run on them, but you can run on Detroit also. And that's what would worry me a bit with this line dropping as much 
much as it has. Listen, this number has come down from six all the way down to three and a half. Now at six, at five, at four and a half, you saw sharp money coming in on the underdog Detroit Lions, but the sharps aren't jumping all over three and a half. It's already moved two and a half points. I think what you're going to see here is Green Bay being able to run the football on a team that is beatable up front against the run. And then is, even though you know from listening to me, I'm not crazy about the Green Bay rush defense at all. I mean, they've been horrible outside of game one against Chicago against the run. But I think they'll be fine against the pass. And I think that's what you got to worry about when you're going up against Detroit. They'll run the football a little bit, but you can't let Stafford beat you. I like Green Bay at this price. They're minus three and a half rather than six, four, four and a half down to three and a half. And that's when we say maybe jump on Green Bay if you happen to agree with me on that play. So our free pick, our opinion on the video for Monday is the Green Bay Packers minus the points. Check out all the stuff going on at DocSports.com, including the seven-unit NHL play. Get that discounted package for the rest of the football season, all available, DocSports.com on Monday. All right, listen, if you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Sprites at DocSports.com. Let's put Monday in the win column. We'll be right back here no later than 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday, and we'll have our NFL recap at that time. Best of luck on Monday, everybody.